let's move on to the story everybody seems to be talking about out there, and that is Fauci's testimony yesterday in front of Congress. Um, Fauci, of course, uh, was the scientist that seemed to be, uh, who was, of course, they had, he's now retired, uh, retired in, in 2022, the head of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and basically, out of nowhere, really, uh, ran COVID response for the federal government uh, under under Trump and then under under uh, Biden. Uh, it was never the job of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases to do so. It was not his job. But there you go. That's He landed up uh, for a variety of reasons doing that job. And yesterday he was in front of Congress. And um, if you want a good illustration of the state of tribal politics in America today, watch that hearing. Uh, it was completely uninformative. It was a complete show of... Uh, by the way, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene was just at her best in terms of showing what a complete and utter, just simple nutcase she is. She's just, just nuts, completely nuts. Anyway, uh, here's, uh, here's an opportunity to actually investigate, and it needs investigation, the complete and utter failure of the American government to deal with COVID. It was a complete and utter failure in many dimensions. We've talked about this from the very fact that its primary tool of dealing with COVID was rights violation, whether it was lockdowns, all kinds of mandates at the federal and at the state level, uh, shutting down life, shutting down business, shutting down production, bailing everybody out by printing money, giving half-baked advice uh, in terms of medical advice, uh, giving some outright ridiculous advice from the president, uh, uh, massive misinformation, uh, you know, to the extent that people stop trusting medical authorities, period, uh, during this period. This is a uh, just a massive, unequivocal failure of government. And it actually really needs an investigation. It, it needs real hearings. And, and it needs asking some tough questions of people like Fauci. Fauci was there. And, you know, why did the federal government do what it did? Why were the recommendations what they were? Why did they wait until March to have any recommendations? Why did the CDC insist... On, uh, on its own um, COVID test? Why, uh, w why wasn't the protocol of, of, of testing and isolating followed? Why were these other protocols followed? What happened in January, February, March, and, and, and for, you know, until really, you know, mid-2021? This is one of the biggest, maybe the biggest, maybe the biggest failures of the American government in all of American history. And yet, they bring Fauci in, and none of those questions are asked seriously. No discussion is had about what actually happened. The Democrats want to use this opportunity to hail him and congratulate him and what a, how wonderful it is that he followed the science Republicans want to lamb blast him for all kinds of things. I, I have no idea. Marjorie Taylor Greene had pictures there of dead dogs. I guess part of it is, is research that supposedly he funded that resulted in dogs dying. I don't know. Uh, but nothing to do with this. Mainly focused on the lab leak theory versus uh, natural cause, you know, the, 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 the jumping from an animal theory. You know, the, 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 con the consensus seems to be that it was more likely a lab leak than anything else. But that was the entire focus and then emails and hiding and communication. Look, Fauci said and, and did some really bad things. But, the, but it was unfocused, uninteresting, 
and really unfocused on the things that really matter. Like, what could we learn from this? And of course, the reason for this is nobody actually wants to deal with the truth. Nobody actually wants to think through what happened, why it happened, and whose fault with it, it is. Republicans certainly don't want everybody to know how completely and utterly pathetic Donald Trump was during this. I mean, Donald Trump lost any claim to be president of the United States just based on a treatment, just based on his behavior during COVID. He did what I think he and most politicians do very, very well. He stuck his head in the sand for most of it. You know, during January, February. Then he woke up in March and panicked and then accused the city of New York for not shutting down and not uh, doing uh, lockdowns earlier. Uh, he basically fired the CDC, did not allow them to actually do their job, which is to handle a COVID situation. That is why Fauci found himself in the position that he did. Basically, let Fauci and Collins run things uh, it, rather than, as the executive, as the president, taking the reins and making the political decisions. I and mean, this was a complete and utter disaster orchestrated by Trump. And the Republicans don't want that to come out. They don't want to come, they don't want it to come out how utterly incompetent the administration, and particularly Trump himself, were around this. They would rather still talk about ivermectin and all these other uh, discredited solutions. They would rather talk about Fauci's emails and all of that. But let's dig into what actually happened. What failed? Where it failed? How it failed? Who failed? How it got as bad as it did? No interest in actually figuring out, and therefore, as a consequence of that, very little chance that if this ever happens again, we'll actually do the right thing. Now, again, I, I don't think Fauci is free of blame. I think he is blameworthy for a lot of this. I think his recommendations were, in many respects, awful. It's the political class that accepted them. It's the executive branch that actually executes on these things. Uh, it, you know, the, the, the head of the uh, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease doesn't have any actual power. The power lies in those who are his bosses, primarily the president of the United States. The president of the United States was too worried about bleach and, and all kinds of other nonsense and in convincing himself, because ultimately he has um, uh, he has uh, the uh, um, he had the um, what do you call it? Yeah, I lost my thought. Anyway, um, you know the the. Um, Trump cut no red tape except for the vaccines. The only red tape Trump cut, the only success he had, the only thing he did right was fast-track the vaccines. And to the extent that he did that, he should be praised. But of course, <clears throat> that is the one thing, the one thing Trump is running away from. The one thing Trump doesn't want to acknowledge uh, his success in. The one thing Republicans refuse to acknowledge. But no, Trump was an absolute disaster starting in January and was told by people within his administration, this needs to be taken seriously. You actually have to do something here. And Trump was like, no, nah, this is going to go away by itself. It's no problem. Forget about it. Don't worry about this. And this is not hindsight. This is at the time people were talking about this. Throughout February, people were talking about this. And the fact that Trump signed off on massive lockdowns, that's the reality. And urge massive lockdowns. 
The fact that the CDC did not allow COVID tests from outside the country or from non-government entities to be used to be sped around until it designed its own test and then discovered that its test was no good is a fact. That's a massive failure of government. But the instinct of the CDC to say, no, 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 nobody does test, only we design the test. Where does that even come from? And where are the people who made that decision? Where are the people who made that call? Why are they not? Because testing is unimportant, to, you know, to, to, it was unimportant to, to most people uh, after COVID. Who cares about testing? But testing is, is the protocol that everybody in the field advocated for at the time. But now it's not, this is the point, it's not about truth anymore. It's not about reality. It's not about what worked and what didn't, who was right and who was wrong. I mean, there were people right and wrong. We need to evaluate it. We need to, with hindsight, we need to determine who was right and who was wrong in order to be able to have a better response next time. But there's no discussion about these things. No discussion about these things. So that no lessons learned, no zero lessons learned. We're even going to elect Trump to another term. That's as, 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 as you know, as, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's as bad as a lesson as you could get is to actually elect the guy in charge of the fiasco to another term, which is, which is what it looks like. Um, it looks like is going to be done. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, uh, but there are real lessons to be learned here, and they're real good guys and real bad guys, and and uh, they, they need to be. There needs to be a real reckoning, a real reckoning. And and this isn't it. This isn't it. And you know the demonization of people who had alternative views and uh you know just the just the the whole process by both sides so yeah the point i want to make was basically what it all boils down to is that the hearing yesterday was just my tribe versus their tribe it was just a tribal exercise right the democrats have a certain position on COVID. everybody has to line up on the position of COVID. It's not even that sophisticated because they had a sophisticated position on COVID. They would be blaming the Trump administration. They would be blaming Fauci as a member of the Trump administration. They would be blaming the Trump administration for the things that Trump did wrong. But they don't even do that. They're not sophisticated enough to do that. And Fauci's one of theirs, so they can't go after Fauci, right? And of course, the Republicans have to be anti-Fauci, anti-vaccine, anti-everything that happened and blame it all. And Ron DeSantis is the only hero in the whole story, even though Ron DeSantis locked down Florida, opened it up only after Georgia opened it, uh, itself up. And of course, when Georgia opened up, uh, Donald Trump lamb blasted them for opening up before he allowed them to open up. And again, none of that is anything the Republicans want to consider, want to talk about, want to think about. It's not what the tribe has been conditioned to. The tribe has been conditioned to Trump good, dealt with COVID right, the real catastrophe in COVID. The real catastrophe in COVID was Fauci and the vaccines. Fauci and the vaccines. And the fact that Trump was behind the vaccines or, or facilitated them or made them easier and that's one good thing he did, eh, we, we're not going to pay attention to that. No, that's all BS. I mean, this is what you saw in Congress yesterday was tribalism on steroids. This is American governance today is not ruled by facts. It's not ruled by evidence. It's not ruled by uh, logic, reason, thought. It's ruled by the tribe and loyalty to the tribe and commitment to whatever the tribe drives. And it is, uh, it is pathetic, pathetic. You know, I'll add to that the fact that, uh, you know, children were masked, schools were closed. I mean, how absurd was that, that schools were closed? 
early on, early on, it was known that children didn't get the didn't get the virus. And early on, I remember this in, in already in March, it was known that the real danger was the, the elderly, not to children, not even to young adults, the elderly. You could see that in the data coming out of China, which turned out to be quite accurate at the end of the day. I'm not sure the sheer numbers were accurate, but at least the breakdowns were accurate. But again, it, it, COVID was not dealt with from the perspective of an adult, from the perspective of thinking through, looking at the data, analyzing it, and coming up with a rational strategy that both respected rights and respected the science. Science was thrown out very early in the name of tribal affiliation. And certainly in the postmortem, certainly in the analysis of what happened in the past, science is being thrown out. And all we're left with is tribal alliance. Allegiance, alliance. Well, I mean, the solution that should have been practiced was isolate the vulnerable, i.e. old people and anybody else who had a pre-existing condition that was vulnerable. Isolate them. Don't isolate children. And don't bring children home where they're just as exposed to the elderly. Isolate the elderly. Isolate the people who are vulnerable and let everybody else live normal lives. That should have always been the solution. And indeed, that is the solution written in CDC guidelines in terms of how to deal with the pandemic. And then test, test, test. And, and you know, that's it. Should have never, never isolated or, or, or try to shut, it, you know, mask children and mask children well into 2022. Closed schools for almost two years. Insanity. Simple insanity. I mean, completely divorced from science, completely divorced from logic. But if you said that, you were obviously on one side of a tribal dispute, it, you know, and nothing was really put up vis-a-vis, -vis, again, logic, science, and everything else.